So today I got suggested a video from someone called the app 99. He has like a thousand subscribers and, um, for the last month he's been playing on Xbox series X and, uh, he came to the same conclusion that a lot of people came to that. It's a great value that he's very happy with the console. He has both the, the Xbox series X and the PlayStation five. He, he classifies most of the Xbox games as B tier, um, and that's fine. That's his opinion. I don't necessarily agree with that personally, but he gets at the heart of something that PlayStation's been doing that I think is causing a lot of people to have this reaction where, where they're just sort of uh, frustrated, at least because this guy is a, a self-avowed PlayStation fan. I'm going to get into it right now. I hadn't realized I've been talking about the story for a minute. I figured I should actually get to the point. Uh, so basically the app 99 does this great review. I highly recommend you go, go read it. You know, uh, there's some profanity in there. He's very honest and open about his feelings about what has been going on, uh, with Sony and what has been going on with Xbox and the $10 additional upgrade cost is something I've talked about a lot recently and gotten a lot of crap for, um, $70 for all of their games basically that are released. They're also then releasing them later on PC at $49.99 to $59.99 at launch for whatever the, the newest release was or what it was at launch. And now they're going a step farther and they're re-releasing games that were out and they've said they plan to do this in the future. At that $70 price point, Ghost of Tsushima being the most recent. So not only are you paying $70 for every game, and Ratchet and Clank is a masterpiece. There is no, de there is no denying that. Uh, it should be noted that it's a shorter game. Returnal being $70 was surprising to the creators of the game. The fact that Returnal launched at a $70 price point, I think, surprised a lot of people because... I don't know. We've seen games like Miles Morales launch at a lower price point, and Miles Morales was the most successful game, basically, for the PlayStation 5 in recent memory. So when you start adding all this up, you're kind of you kind of look at it, and um, the app says basically he feels like Sony is spitting in his face. Uh, you look conversely at you know his experience with the Xbox. He's he sees Halo. Halo is going to launch at $59.99. You can go to Best Buy right now and you can pre-order that game for $59.99. Uh, Forza is $59.99 also. Next generation, there's no $10 fee or anything. You can get different versions of the game, like with everything, but $59.99, you got a next-gen game out of the box. Any first-party title seems to be priced at that point. Third-party games from EA, that's you know, they've also jumped on that $70 bandwagon and then they still charge you for, you know, extra bells and whistles in the games. And all of this is happening, right? So then you look at what's something that's vaguely comparable to Returnal. So I look at Ascent. How much is Ascent at launch? $30. So there's this narrative going around the internet that Basically, you know, Game Pass is bad. Game Pass doesn't support developers. But then, huh, Matt Piscatella points out, an analyst, he points out, oh, hey, The Ascent made $5 million. So not so. the reason I'm surprised that Sony fans aren't more upset about this is... <laughs> Is because they should be upset about this, I guess was my point, right? You're being charged $70 for every game. Sony is then double dipping and they're charging the full price again later. Xbox doesn't do that. You just get it on PC. Then there's the, the $10 tax basically to play on your PlayStation 5 so that you can use the DualSense features, 3D audio, etc. Some people would argue that well, the developers have to do that extra development time, so I don't mind paying that $10. Okay, I'll give that to you. Sure. Whatever. I don't agree with it, but we're not going to we're we're not going to agree on that. I think I think you are being charged yet another fee, yet another way to increase their profit margins. Sony's already making 
tons and tons of money. They're making phenomenal games. They're charging $70 for those games. Um, it's the, these extra double dips that I don't, that I take issue with. And people are like, oh, Destin, why are you, why are you like so in on this one? You're such an Xbox, you're an Xbox fanboy. And I'm like, look, like when Xbox was doing some shady stuff, like releasing worse games, like there's a meme of me doing the 900p versus 1080p thing. The PlayStation 4 did stuff better. So history would show <laughs> that I, I take people to task when I feel it is appropriate. And in this instance, I am surprised that Sony players are not more upset about a, the $70 price tag. I think there's a sense of pride with paying that $70 almost like that. That's the vibe that I get for it from it. Right? Well, I pay $70 and I get a stellar experience. It is like so superior. Okay. That makes sense, you know, for this launch year, but now there's this big gap of largely nothing, maybe Kena bridge of spirits, which I hear isn't going to be tremendously long. That's just what I've heard, like uh, on some podcasts. And then you just sort of have whatever. I I don't know, like what Deathloop? I guess you have Deathloop coming out on on PlayStation. That'll be coming to Xbox later, also uh, to Game Pass for you know your monthly subscription fee. Um, there's a few straw man arguments that I keep hearing about the whole Game Pass thing too. Well, you don't own your games. Well, you can, and you get a discount if you choose to do that. And the fact that let's say you're a PlayStation fan and you paid $70 for Returnal and you ended up hating it or you played it because it was largely reviewed quite well. And people said it was great. You play it and you just don't like the game. It's not for you. Um, you sell it, you get 30, 40 bucks, right? So you've lost $30. You get, you see where I'm going with this? That's two months of Game Pass Ultimate where you could have played Ascent. Uh, we'll, we'll use Ascent as the example, the equivalent of Returnal, right? Returnal, again, still my game of the year. This isn't about the games, by the way. This isn't about the excellent work that the developers do. This isn't about the quality of the games. These are about prices that I feel are totally unnecessary for a company that is posting record profits right? And it comes at your expense. It, and it just baffles me that we get these straw man arguments about Game Pass being bad. And like, I think it's gotten to the point where these straw men are so ridiculous that people have stopped listening to those arguments because they're ridiculous and everybody knows they're ridiculous. But when you start looking at the actual practices that we know of what's going on behind the scenes for indie developers, uh, we know what is going on behind the scenes with crossplay being a charge, right? And we we can clearly see that they are charging you more for the products that you play, even if the experience is a short experience. It's still seventy bucks. It doesn't matter. That's that's the new the new thing. And a lot of people don't agree with me on the seventy dollars thing. That's fine. Whatever. Like we don't have to agree on everything. But I want to point out. These stories aren't manufactured, sponsored stories of people like App99 saying, I am fed up with these practices. These are PlayStation fans who are trying out Xbox and going, hey, this is a lot better value. You know, there's all these like conversations online right now. It's it, and it's really just like it's getting to the point where people are not listening. You're talking about Flight Simulator having a marketplace and allowing creators to create planes and airports and detailed things. And that is being twisted. I, I posted the controversy video not that long ago. That is being twisted into, well, Microsoft withheld things from Flight Simulator so that they could let the fans make that content. This is total BS, by the way. This is not what happened, but this is the narrative that's being pushed by I don't know, insane people, I guess. It's it's crazy to me. So the theory going around online is that content was removed from Flight Simulator so that fans can make it. And then the fans set their own price, by the way, in the marketplace and then sell that. By the way, something Flight Simulator has been doing for decades. 
it's a straw man argument. It doesn't make sense. It would be like saying, well, steam gets a cut. So steam is evil. It's ridiculous. And when you make that argument and you correlate that to a $10 upgrade cost so that you can use your controller, it it's equally as ridiculous. It is a straw man argument. Keep to the topic at hand. Let's talk like, how do you not have an issue with the $10 cost? Largely what I hear is, well, that supports the developers. So you're saying Sony created a console that is so anti-developer that they're forced to do this additional labor and we have to eat the expense. That's the logic jumps that we get to, to say, I'm willing to pay that 10 extra dollars. And that's, I'm just like, that's ridiculous. You paid $500 for a console. You're telling me back in the N64 days when I paid for my rumble pack and I put it in there. To activate that rumble pack, I should have paid more for every game that had rumble. Maybe that was the case. I'm, I'm going to have to look that up. Was that what it was like? Because I would equally be just as weirded out by that also. When you buy a piece of hardware, right? The piece of hardware should work. You don't buy a car. <laughs> And then pay $10 every time you want to turn it on. Right? Like, so the $10 thing is weird. The $70 game thing. Like, look, if it was really about inflation of games, all games on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 would be $70. So I don't really know what the story is there or the reasoning behind those games being $70. Is it really just the 3D audio programming and the controller programming? What about the place? What about the PC ports of games that came out before? Oh, well, they had to, you know, do it for PC. So they have to charge uh, basically a full price again. You are being charged too much. And I'm surprised that you're not more upset that you're being too charged. And it's to the point where some people are getting so defensive about it that they are finding things that the competition is doing, like allowing people to get paid for creating mods and turning that into a negative somehow. Something something that Flight Simulator has done for decades. Again, by the way. And yes, Microsoft gets a cut of those profits. That is the thing that happens. Just like, who else? A bunch of people do this right now. You create a mod, you're allowed to set your price. You get paid 70%. Usually the company makes 30. Steam allows you to release games on their store. Each thing is an agreed to term. Usually I believe steam is also 70, 30 Microsoft's uh, game list is also 70, 30 on the profits. That's just sort of industry standard for that stuff. So $70 for every game is not industry standard, especially when you have competing services that offer it for less. So I just kind of wanted to talk about like the app 99, the review that he did, I think it echoes how a lot of people are feeling about PlayStation. Um, they're clearly charging PS5 owners $10 more after they've already acquired the console. Um, they're making games cross-gen. Uh, not all of them, like Ratchet & Clank was all next-gen, but um, GT is going to be cross-gen, for example, and I know that's one that a lot of people are upset about. Their games are more expensive. So if you get a game like Returnal that has a a save deletion bug and you paid $70 for that. I can understand why you're upset on game pass. Ascent right now has problems right now, but they're going to patch it. And, and what did you pay? You, you paid your, your service fee, or if you purchased it, then I think you got the better version anyway. It's specifically, there's some, there's some minor issue with the, uh, the game pass version of the game that's being corrected. So anyway, I, I guess I'm just, if you're not upset, about $70 for every game and the $70 PC games. We'll say they're $60. They're released a year later at $10 off, right? One year later on PC, but I'll, I'll post the actual price of those on here. If you're not upset about um, upgrades costing 10 extra dollars than they do on PlayStation 4 on P PS5, if you're not upset about $70 re-releases, why? Why are you not upset? If you are upset, let me know. But I'm really curious. Why, why does that just all get a pass? When 
other people out there are doing things that, in my opinion, are more pro-consumer. When Xbox was saying stuff like, we have a console for that, it's the 360, and they were basically being awful, <laughs> I called them out on it. And right now, I think PlayStation is doing a lot of stuff that we should be questioning. That's not about bias. That's not about not being equal, right? That is about saying, hey, all these things are going on right now in this wheelhouse. What is up with that? Somebody please ask that question. I I, I would I just want to hear the answer, really. That's it. Anyway, sorry, I kind of I went on a, a rant there. I just I don't like it when consumers are are being I don't like it. <laughs> It's not a good deal. It's a bad deal for gamers. It's a bad deal for you. I'll give them this. If it was just $70 games, okay, you, you've you said you're going to release your $70 games. It's a tough pill to swallow. But is every game really $70? How come Miles Morales wasn't? What was it about Miles Morales that said, okay, that one's okay. It, it doesn't have to be $70. But Returnal is $70. I'd be, I'd be curious to learn more about that. Like, how are those prices set? I don't know. I probably should have done a little bit more reading on this, but it's just sort of how I feel. And that really bugs me. I don't see it happening on the Microsoft side. If it was, I would be calling it out. But right now, honestly, a lot of people are echoing what I'm saying. Microsoft has the best deal in gaming. That's their marketing terminology. And it's true. It literally is the best deal in gaming. It, it's hard to beat. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hey, th thank you for just listening on this one. Uh, it's probably going to be one of those videos where I just make a bunch of people mad. I'm just at the point where I give up because even when I approach situations where I'm trying to be uh, neutral or just state an opinion, it just gets twisted anyway. So I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, I'm just going to talk about what I'm going to talk about. So... Hopefully you'll let me keep doing that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like these sort of videos, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. I'm going to call it like I see it. And I don't like this one, just like I don't like BRs and Halo. And like, sometimes I'm going to have weird opinions. We don't agree on that's fine. Right. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe. And if you want to become a member, memberships are turned on, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. Um, what else? Oh, we have a store. I got some coffee cups. I got some pillows over there. If you want to hug your pillow. Well, I don't know what else to say, so I'm going to get out of here. Bye for now, everybody.